Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast, a conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Well, hey, welcome, everyone. We're glad that you're joining us for another weekly podcast. I'm JV, and I'm here along with Barry Whistler who uh, many of you know was the founding pastor here at Ephrata Community Church and also serves as the director president of HarvestNet International. Um, and Barry was our guest this weekend. A number of times throughout the year, Barry, you'll have the opportunity to speak here at weekends at Ephrata Community Church. Yeah. And uh, it's always a pleasure when you do. So thanks for joining I us. It. I enjoy it also. Thank you. Uh, you actually mentioned this weekend that um, you it's never a burden for you to share, even if it's three services, it's just a real joy. Um, yeah, actually, it's one of the strange, strangely, I don't know why, but one of the things I miss about pastoring is preaching the same message several times. Yeah. I, I, I can't explain it. Yeah, but there's joy in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I see you're ready for a podcast. You didn't bring your uh, camp, camping mug, though. No, right? I forgot that. That's, right, that's what real hurry. podcasters do, just for the next time around. You're supposed to have yeah. a cool camp mug. But uh, anyway. A teacher always brings some notes. You're right. So, you do you have know. notes. So we're good, <laughs> in case we can't fill our 15 minutes here together. <laughs> Barry and I, uh, we often we have opportunity, well not often, but throughout the years we have opportunities to sit and have dinner together and we always have awesome conversations. I love um, just getting to know who Barry Whistler is a little bit more than um, just from the platform, of course. And this weekend, um, Barry shared a message called um, A Door of Hope from the Book of Hosea. Afterwards, there was um, you know, some individuals that were sharing and some of them were saying, uh, I just really love when Barry Whistler shares. And I said, yeah, I mean, I do too, but say more. And one of the things that they articulated was when Barry speaks, um, it's like he's, he's just speaking to me and I can apply it so easily to my journey. Um, so as I thought about that and thought about who is Barry Whistler, I kind of wondered, you've had over 45 years of teaching and preaching. And I was kind of curious um, if your style or the method or how you communicate, has that changed at all in, in that journey as you've you know, had different roles, different um, opportunities? Um, what's, what's that been like for you, just kind of as a personal note? Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know exactly what sh- uh, this person was talking about. I, I have changed my style and my presentation somewhat on purpose. Yeah. I used to, in the beginning, I would preach an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, which I later on realized is just too long. Okay. I mean, that's a teacher trying to get as much content yeah. as you, you think, as much as you can give everybody, they're, all, they're better off, and it's not the case. Yeah. So I've shortened my time, of course. Um, still need to tell some more stories. Um, and I used to do a lot of exegetical preaching mm-hmm. where I, would, I took a year through the Book of Romans and a year through the Book of Ephesians, and I did yeah. one out of First John. So, but I've been, I've, I've become a little bit more topical and maybe, I'm not a prophet, but I think maybe a little bit more prophetic. Like yeah. the topic I was supposed to have on Sunday was about the local church being uh, the hope of the world, yeah. which I would love to preach on. In fact, when I heard Kevin asked me to speak for him and uh, I said, sure. When I heard the topic, I thought, well, great, I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. And then I just felt like the church needed something else. Yeah. So I've probably been a little bit more of that kind of a little more subjective uh what needs to be said and what makes my spirit jump that's what yep. i end up talking about yeah i probably become a little bit more honest through the years i think that was one of the things that they noticed maybe yeah. yeah it helps people i mean if a, if a speaker can laugh at himself or yeah. be vulnerable about his own difficulties i think people identify with yeah that. absolutely yeah, I well, don't know. that's, that's awesome. I, I think I think that your um, vulnerability and your honesty certainly came through this weekend, specifically even when you mentioned, mm-hmm. hey, 2020, for me, like for many people, has been um, incredibly challenging. And, yeah, I, you know, each person is going to be able to unpack that differently. I'm sure we'll sit here at the end of December and we'll look back on 2020 and kind of recall what a journey it's been. Yeah, um, I, I hope we all laugh at it. Because, I, mean, I think we will because yeah. there's some pretty funny things that have happened, but that's it's true. been difficult. Sunday, I joked about it being, you know, having the, the week from hell or the year from hell. That's right. Um, and I think a lot of people feel like they just can't wait to get past this yeah. year. Truth is, we have difficult times yeah. anytime, not That's necessarily right. related to the calendar or politics or a pandemic. And as Christians, we have to learn how to navigate that. Right. Well, and that's kind of what you were sharing on a little bit here this weekend, um, a door of hope. And I'm like, yes, I want to go through that door, right? Yeah, right. Um, and you uh, started our, our discussion or the, the teaching time from the book of Hosea, which I guess I would 
assume is not one of the top 20 most read books um, <laughs> in the church. Yeah. Uh, so what, what drew you to that in particular um, and that passage about the wilderness and uh, him speaking tenderly to us in the door? What drew you to that and that for that to become kind of the, the starting point? Yeah, well, I, I think I've mentioned this before. I've, um, the last you know, five, six years, I've gone through some adjustment and changes. I've transitioned into yeah. a new role, so I had to readjust to that new job and reality. This year has been particularly difficult. One of the things that prepared me for what I've gone through has been some discussions I had with Jack Taylor in mm -hmm. Austria, of all places, where he talked about how God told Paul that his strength is perfected in weakness. And so... Many times as charismatics, we are so focused on the positive confession, and I'm all for positivity, and I think our confession is important. But we do need to know that there are times God deals with us in ways that we don't like, yeah. that we, we experience something. And I think many times it's God's getting at something. Sure. Um, the, the writings on the dark night of the soul, when you just go through something, it's sort of unexplainable. And God changes us inside. Mm -hmm. And Jack at that point said uh, that God sometimes pushes you to the limit of what you think you can take. Probably to get at something, but also to show you what you can take. Mm -hmm. Because uh, trials produce endurance and yeah. faith. So in that, in that sort of context, I think I came across that verse in a book written by Jim Gall called Teach Your Heart to Sing Again. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it, I thought it was very relevant for where we are now because yeah. the Valley of Acor is the Valley of Trouble. Trouble. And it sort of feels like this is that way, maybe yeah. worldwide. Yeah. I had, uh, I get to talk to dozens of leaders from around the world, and they're all sort of shaking their heads, mm -hmm. uh, finding it hard to believe what we are going through and that it is global. It's been hard for everybody, perplexing, yeah. not sure what to believe, who to believe, can't understand why. And um, even for, I think it's been hard for leaders. I've talked to a lot of pastors that tell me that it's just been hard to plan and hard to make decisions, and they, they actually feel like they can't really please anybody just because of the atmosphere. Yeah. Everybody's agitated. Everybody has an opinion. Yeah. I get all that, but the leader has to sort of try to keep people moving forward. Yeah. Now, there's certainly a different dynamic when you consider trouble for those that are in leadership roles. Yeah. Uh, and they carry that differently. Right. But obviously, for many of us who are listening and who were here with us this weekend, trouble can be simply like dealing with the kids in the morning. Right. Um, oh, yeah. All the way to the intensity of job loss and finances and relationships. Yeah. Um, and so, again, in, in, in your journey now as a leader, though, Trouble can be around any corner, and, oh, yeah. and you don't even know it. Right. Um, so what have maybe you done in the past to, like you said, prepare your heart for the knowledge that it could be? I mean, you don't live in the fear of it, like every day, but how do you keep your, your heart in a place where even if trouble comes, yeah. you know that there's hope around the other corner? I think there's some basic foundational beliefs and postures you can hold, but you can never prepare because sure. the difficulty, the trouble takes you by surprise, and many times it's something you've never faced before. That's right. And I, I, I would remember seeing older believers who seemed so calm and confident. And I thought, wow, how do you get there? Because, yeah. you know, you, you can melt down when you face something you're not accustomed to. Mm -hmm. But the way they got there was by going through stuff. And yeah. then you find out, you know what? God does meet me. God is yeah. watching over me. Um, and I, th I think just knowing that, that he's, he is there. Because we, many times in a, something like that, you don't feel him probably right. can't even hear him right and you f you're, you're you're like a two-year-old who feels that you know mom or dad isn't there for you at the time and you're melting down and the truth is he's watching over a lot more than we think yeah and um like i said on sunday i go to the psalms yeah because i find them very real and very vulnerable so here's king david yeah. our hero a type of jesus and he's completely vulnerable yeah and again many christians um find that hard we feel like we have to put sort of a positive face and spin on everything mm -hmm. and i'm not sure that helps us all the time yeah there, there is value in it but i think we have to be careful yeah that's really good barry when you um were talking about this weekend i really appreciated one moment when you just kind of asked the question or encourage us to consider those moments when we feel like the lord is asleep like asleep on the watch <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah. And there are days that we feel that way, right? And we're like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I can easily, I think faith, faith just kind of comes easy for me. Um, but I can cognitively be like, yeah, I know he hears me. Um, but is he too busy with something else? Kind yeah, of like, yeah. or is he asleep? So how can I activate what I cognitively agree with, you know, on a day to day basis? Maybe the question is, what type of application can I have um, when he is leading me through the wilderness, and and I still believe, but I'm just not seeing it yet? What do you re- encourage us to, or how would could we respond in those moments? Yeah, well, I I think we can continue to cry out to him. Um, and tell ourselves the truth, yeah. the true things we know, although yeah. they don't seem real at the time. I think we need to tell him he's for me, not against me. He is watching over me. Um, he is already planning my rescue. You know, while we're in That's there right. struggling and feeling yeah. like the pit is just That's a good bottomless, reminder. he's already on the way. Uh, I'm thinking right now of a song that Lauren Daigle sings about uh, he would send an army out to get us. Yeah. That's the kind of love and um, care that he does have for us. But when you're in that, you don't feel it. Mm-hmm. And I also think that God is big enough to take our venting and our cries for help. And I, I'm not advocating anything near blasphemy, but I, I, some of the things that David uh, and the psalmist say are pretty strong. Yeah. And he's big enough to take that. It's like a mom or a dad when you have a two-year-old that's just angry and is just... Yeah even mad at you and hitting you and all those kinds of things happen with children. Yeah. Um, I've had times where I was just so really honest with God about how I felt. I mean, sometimes I'd add on the end, I know that ain't true, but that's all I can see right now. Yeah. And he, yeah. he gets that. Yeah, that's so. exactly right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I really appreciate that, Barry, because I think that, um, you know, a, a lot of times, especially if the communication is between other, other believers, other Christ followers, um, we're a little reluctant to say what, what we honestly feel yeah. uh, out of a fear of being shamed or out of a fear of like, like you said, like, I know it's not true, right? but I got to admit, like, that's all I got right now. Yeah. Um, and so I really appreciate you kind of opening that, that door. Cause that, that almost feels like that is the kind of the door to hope is beginning to get that honest about the despair that I'm in or the hopelessness that I feel or the, right. the why me God, some of that stuff. Um, because again, like th- those thoughts are not hidden from the Lord. No. He knows that and more. That's right. And so <laughs> since the thoughts aren't hidden yet, why is there this reluctancy to let those thoughts come out in my cries, in my groanings to the Lord, um, as though there's any shame attached to it? It almost right. feels like sometimes the devil wants to squish like even that honesty, that honest expression, as a way of keeping me from entering that door of hope. I don't know. Well, I remember seeing others that I would consider giants of the faith and thinking, wow, how did they get there? Mm-hmm. And uh, the more I got to know them and they would be honest, I found out some of the stuff they went through was really hard. Yeah. And um, I think we learn things. Perhaps some of the best lessons I've learned as a leader, I learned the hard way. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not bragging sure. about that. That's just the truth of yeah. it. And I think difficult times help mold us and shape us. I remember praying to God about different things in my life. And then when he answered it, uh, it didn't come the way I expected. It wasn't one of these easy things where it just changed, but he worked it out. Yeah. And um, even right now, I mean, I I, I gave some statistics on Sunday about leaders, people we may think are amazingly strong and probably are, but yet um, I think it was 70% of CEOs and leaders are facing significant anxiety, and then about 40% are just depressed. And um, actually to watch somebody who is in that still continue to lead on, and I know several like mm-hmm. that, it's inspiring yeah. to know that you can get through it and the That's door right. of hope will be there. Uh, you're not going to end there. Mm-hmm. It's just something you pass through. Yeah. It's awesome. I, um, well, Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Keep going. I like that. Yeah. I like his quotes, particularly yeah. that one is just don't stop. That's right. Keep going. That's right. And obviously, you know, as Christ followers, um, we have uh, inside of us the, the spirit of, of Christ, which allows us to set our gaze on something differently than just the, the emptiness that's in front of us. Right. So, you know, I, I can appreciate, yeah, if you're going through hell, don't stop, but also don't stop gazing upon right. 
you know, in right. that journey. Um, I think I would have a hard time just trudging on. <laughs> yeah, well. Right? Yeah, I understand. I, I agree. Yeah. You know, it says that Jesus endured the cross for the joy set before him. So right. So obviously he knew what was on the other side. Yeah. And so to him it was, I'm going to get through this because I know it has a purpose. That's right. And uh, it was a glorious purpose. And I think that's um, why the, what you shared this weekend was so um, timely and so poignant for, for now. Because we don't exactly know what's on the other side. True. Except that there is something on the other side, right. and yeah. that he's faithful to complete all the good things that he's begun in us. And, um, you know, Pastor Kevin and, and others have been continually challenging us to receive all that the Lord has mm-hmm. in the transforming things he's doing in us right. in this season. Yeah. And I know for me, I would love to be able to hit the eject button, or at least get through the valley um, faster, fast maybe. Fast forward. That's right. Can I just fast forward? And yet I recognize... <laughs> I could miss something. Yeah, actually, um, and and so not that I don't want the Lord to delay any of that. I don't want Him to you know, to be slow yeah. in bringing me through the valley. But I also don't want to miss whatever it is He's you know transforming in me yeah. or doing in me or working out in my family that kind of thing. Um, I, I, I've I've often told people, people I, I think Americans need to study history more. But mm. this is not the first pandemic that yeah. the world has ever had. In fact, this one is not impacting us near to the degree than some of the other pandemics have. And other things in history, like World War II, when I go to Europe and I talk to some of the older folks yeah. about what happened on the soil, it's it's a fuller version than what That's I got right. in my books here That's at, right. in America. I think you think of someone like Corey Ten Boom, who was through yeah. the Holocaust, and yeah. the, the, the encouragement and hope that she gave to probably millions of people That's afterwards. Right. So That's right. God takes this stuff and uses it for good. I don't yeah. like it that way. I wish it yeah. was a quicker way, but it's true. Yeah. Well, uh, if you didn't get a chance to hear all of Barry's message, please hop on the website at effortcommunitychurch.com. Listen to the whole thing because I think it'll really bless you and encourage you uh, in your journey. And uh, Barry, I just wondered if you could just kind of close our time. We're just praying for those that might be watching the podcast, listening later, yeah. um, even just for the courage to endure and to believe that there is a door of hope in front of us. Because yeah. um, there always is. There There's, is. There always is. And uh, yet maybe today somebody just needs that reminder, that encouragement again. Um, and the faith to put their hand to the door and open it. Right. Yeah. Sure. That'd be great. I'm, I'm going to finish. I'm going to pray for you today, just like I did on Sunday. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, the, the prayers from Romans 15, verse uh, 13, and uh, it just says, "Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit." And Father, I just ask for yeah. each person that's watching. Um, we need to stay in joy and in peace, and even in our believing, we need to stay in faith. And I ask you, God, yeah. you are the God of all hope, and we know That's that right. we are a people of hope, and we ask you to fill us with your hope. Help each person find the door or doors of hope yeah. in their valleys of trouble. Yeah. And we ask you to endow us with the power of the Holy Spirit That's right. to continue to navigate uh, what we're in right now. I pray yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, Barry, thanks for being a faith hero of mine yeah. oh, and uh, and uh, for demonstrating to us uh, that you can endure, that you can walk through the valley of trouble and come out on the other side with joy. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Hope you can join us this weekend, either here on campus uh, or online. This is our final weekend in our Faith Work series. Mm-hmm. Pastor Kevin's going to be sharing that, that message on the church, uh, the hope that the church is to the world, and so we hope you can join us for that. Um, and then we're about to enter, that's right, the Advent Christmas season. Wow. So Barry, I am already. excited. I'm yeah. so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. I think a year. lot of people are. Like, we need it. We need the thrill of that hope as well Absolutely. Uh, this season. Yeah. So stay with us um, through the month of December here as we get to celebrate um, the birth of our Savior. Mm. And uh, we look forward to either seeing you here on campus uh, or online again. Have a great rest of your week. Take care. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and of course, learn more about us by visiting effortofcommunitychurch.com. Community